Camp. I am Extreme Elixir, aka Kyle. This is Imaru. This is the Boogie Slayer Muta. Yes, I saw that beautiful podcast episode earlier today, and you, you're, you're, dude, you're all heroes. You're all heroes. Bro, I tell you what, he'll never take good advice, no matter how much you give him. He'll never take advice. You know the best part about that episode is like, for a moment, like Nux was like, he was like me before having issues with Boogie where he was like I believe the best in people and I'm like alright here's the floor <laughs> Dude, right. that's the you know problem some people has to learn <laughs> by just trampling the, that's, going down that's going the problem down, yeah. though like okay I he absolutely started out that way and I quickly saw the switch flip for him where he was like oh this guy's fucking helpless I can't do it yeah, and like, as, as the episode got longer he got more more unhinged towards him it's like the people that try to help Chris Chan. It's like, man, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. Nah, dude. But that uh, dude. Give... I, say out of fil- I say out of filming that podcast for two years at this point now, I've never fucking seen him that pissed in an episode. <laughs> like, holy shit. <laughs> I wait, like, I, if we had a Patreon, we would have put, like, the after the show, we always have, like, sometimes we have, like, 10, 20 minutes of just, like, fucking shitting. Yep. And it was, like, yeah, at the end the of it, it was just, like, fucking... I think the first time I've ever witnessed, like, dead fucking silence of, like, just, you're dead inside. It's <laughs> Bewildered, like, absolutely broken. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, man, I mean, if you want to take a crack and fix it, it's, like, it's always like, I can fix him, or I can fix him. All right, <laughs> I'm going to go take ahead. him away from this. <laughs> go, go off. You can me. definitely try. Yeah. <laughs> it's like telling the country of Brazil how to play fucking siege. It's like, all right, go ahead and teach him. <laughs> go go, oh, go ahead. Show him, show him how to put up a wall. He's not going to listen. Dude, I swear oh, no. to God, it's like it's like it's like press F to reinforce doesn't even exist as a tooltip for that country. Fuck is F, dude. Like I, <laughs> the fuck is F? No, dude. It's like I said. I swear to God, there's a translation issue, and when they look at the wall, it doesn't. It says nothing. It just says bullshit, bro. They have the game translated in squiggly lines for <laughs> Japan and stuff. Of course, there's not a fucking. Even everyone knows how to do it, man. What the fuck? They just deliberately choose not to. It's like a good idea doesn't even fucking hit them. <laughs> Play Siege enough to know. <laughs> but today, uh, today we're going to be talking about... Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, censorship in video games and more specifically the whole Sweet Baby Ink bullshit, which I think is... Me and Muda talked about this a little bit. It's completely overblown. There's no reason it should be getting it's it's a lot of it's a lot of really whiny people just being really loud about nothing. Geeks and gamers. <laughs> oh Jesus. Well 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 which which topic do you want to start off with? Um I mean, so the way I became familiar with this was unfortunately Twitter. Um, That was a mistake. So I decided to do some reading up on it. One of the first claims I saw on it was that uh, Sweet Baby Inc. has only been uh, associated with essentially bad games. And I was like, well, I've literally never heard of this group before. I do. Yeah, you have to bring me up. You have to bring me up to speak with right, this because on. I don't. Me, I don't know me, who they are. Let me bring up the whole story, okay? Yeah. So I want to say at this point, a couple of weeks ago, a Steam group was created, uh, titled "Sweet Baby Inc." It detected, right? So it was made by a guy. I think it's like Caburotos or whatever his name. Mm-hmm. He's a Brazilian gamer who like made a Steam list, amalgamating all. Like he basically, you know, how Steam lists work, right? Like Steam curator lists. So he yeah, makes yeah. a list of video games that Sweet Baby Inc. has registered on their site that they worked with. And he's basically just made a list. It's like, these are the games. Um, so it's kind of like a boycott list for some of these guys who are against, like, the diversity, et- equ- um, equity, and inclusion. So DEI. Oh, you know how they have, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Diversity yeah, yeah. training. Like, is diversity that a, consultation. Go is ahead. that that? I think I saw a list of, like, woke games. Yes. It probably yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, my yeah, God. So I thought it was a meme. What? Are you telling me that's real? No, that, that, that's real. So, it's real. Okay, so when no I fucking it, way. So when I covered it three weeks ago... Um, it was just a list that was made, and the reason why it blew up was because one of the um, one of the people at Tweet Baby Inc. 
uh, I think it's like Chris Kindred. They made a whole like tweet where it's like, all right, guys, see this harassment? Ba get this guy, like report this guy. So they targeted, harassed this one dude to get his basically like Steam account like Ooh. revoked and all this extra shit. When in reality, it wasn't, and he just made a list, right? So they reacted to it in like this weird manner. And basically through the Streisand effect, his like account, his like list gained up to 300,000 followers now. So, oh god! Yeah. yeah, they caused it to happen. That makes sense. And then, like at the time, people were looking into old tweets and videos from Sweet Baby Inc. like executives and like their leadership and writers. And you know, one of their accounts was saying some really wild shit about like white people and everything. And it was a, uh, it was just one of the. It's, I, I gotta, I gotta exactly remember. It's like fuck. One of them was like about like wiping the Jews or something. It was insane. Like. Wow. The, so some of the, a lot of it was like I think one of the tweets was, "Thank God I don't wake up as a white gamer or some bullshit like that." It's crazy, right? <laughs> wow. like, so I basically said like when it comes to any consulting firm, like if you're an inclusive consulting firm, it probably doesn't help if you choose to include every race but the white guy. You know, I'm like it's probably not good optics, right? You probably should apologize. Yeah, it's not probably, a good look. Yeah. yeah, you probably should like call that person into the office and be like, "What the fuck are you saying? Like, why would you say that shit?" You know. So people were looking into some of her old GDC talks, like one of the uh, writers who was, she always kept on like bringing up like white people and fragility and all that stupid shit. And, you know, I, I pretty much just said, look, I get your diversity firm. Like I don't have, I personally don't care if a firm is involved because I looked at the roster of games. Uh, a lot of people pulled out Suicide Squad as a bad example, but they also had like Alan Wake 2, which is a right. game that I really love. So. That's a phenomenal game. It they had they my mug. Yeah, they had hitters, they had misses. Um, I think I, I, where I agree with, where I don't like, I don't like the fact that they call themselves a diversity and inclusion firm, but then you're like not including one specific person. That's just that's just gonna piss people off. And the other mm -hmm. thing is, it's like so a lot of the mainstream journalist sites, like fucking The Verge, IGN, Polygon, all this shit, they came out um, and pretty much said like, oh, it was actually the guys, the the Steam list people that were harassing. Sweet Baby Ink person, not the other way around, which, like, the actual fact is the harassment only happened from the Sweet Baby Ink guy who was, like, get the Steam account banned. So it's a weird situation. Yeah. Um, Corp Corpus just rubbing each other, trying to, like... Yeah, like, I don't, guess, like, I guess, look, I don't when it comes to woke stuff or whatever, right? Like, I'm not in that pipeline or whatever. Like, no, I'm not, of course not. But, like, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just one of those dudes where it's, like, maybe it's my tism, but, like, the fact is a fact, right? Like, one side started it, and then, like... Now they're saying that, like, oh, 4chan and all these other websites started. I'm like, no, no, no. The actual beef Classic. started between the Steam and this company. So let's just stick to what mm. happened there. So it's a whole fucking mess. But that's generally what it is. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a group of people who are boycotting video games based on their affiliation to this firm. Which I don't think is harassment. I think that's just that's, people are voting with their fucking wallet. Right exactly. Now. Absolutely. Like, and that's yeah. something that should Simple be allowed. Simple as that. Yeah. Like, I don't choose to listen to some people or, like, some media because I don't like who it's made by. So, fucking, I don't yeah, absolutely. give them my money. Done. Mm -hmm. And I think both – I think everybody is allowed to do that. That's how society fucking works, you know? I yeah, – Simple. Me personally – uh, Me personally, like – Despite the fact that we're doing a podcast, I am not much of a podcast person unless there's a specific person on that episode that I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds interesting. Let's watch that. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, there's certain podcasters that I just don't listen to. Either it's because I don't like the main personality or I don't like what they represent. And it all, all of it comes down to not everything has to be a boycott. <laughs> Not everybody has to follow, follow your virtue or your signal. Vote with your own wallet. Stop trying to get a big old mob in this. If other people look at what you're doing and say, yeah, you know what, that's right. I, I don't like what he's doing either. Go ahead, follow. But mm. stop this fucking, yeah. stop this fucking gerrymandering and getting all these people to get all fucking uppity when in reality you're the one who got you're the one who got pissed off about it. That's honestly what I hate about social media nowadays is that it's real fucking easy to just get a whole bunch of people riled up and put, pu push them in one direction. And then you sit on the sidelines and watch what happens. Yeah, I mean, if they already called to get this guy banned, and I, I feel like that's very like well, Valve jumped in smoking and said gun. What yeah, he did was harassment. So there's a little bit of anger from the sweet baby and people about that. 
Um, and I'm just like, it's as, it's as simple as that. Like, it wasn't harassment, so there's no reason for Valve or any company to just ban you. Um, and, like, honestly, it wouldn't even have that big of a deal if this one person just didn't bother bringing this to everyone's attention, right? Like, Right. Mm. Absolutely. It's just so fucking, it's such a weird situation to, to kind of see going down. And and then where I get lost in the whole thing is, like, now it's kind of blown up into the situation where people have looked at it as this big mega conspiracy now where Sweet Baby Inc. is called into big companies in order to raise the ESG. Of course, it has to be a conspiracy. Well, well, the conspiracy is, is, like, they bring Sweet Baby Inc., to raise the ESG investment score for a company. And so the higher the investment score, the more money gets tossed yep, in there. Yep. Mm, and then like I saw okay. I saw one post on Twitter today, just actually before we filmed, where it was like, oh, so they raise the ESG, they get the investors, and then like the Jews at BlackRock are the ones that are funneling. I'm like, dude, it always, <laughs> it how always the, how like, the fuck do fucking... you get BlackRock in this shit? Well, appa- well, apparently, I don't know. Maybe there's like an investment over there. I haven't went down too far into it, so uh, you know, for, hey, credit where credit's due. I don't know what the fuck the actual. I haven't like looked into it, so take everything I say right there with a grain of salt. This is just like. I looked at it from a surface, didn't even right. bother scratching into it because... Yeah, th- this is yeah. the first time I'm hearing about any of this, so I need to do my own research. Yeah. See what the fuck yeah. is going I, on. I would highly recommend everyone to do their own research on what the facts mm. really are because it's one of those things where I really feel like you're never able to get a straight answer from either side, right? Like, uh, if you're on the side of, like, the, the journalists or whatever... Like the guy, you know the you know the Cuphead meme, the guy who couldn't do the tutorial for Cuphead. Oh yes. God! And Doom, that guy came out and started shit talking. I'm like, bro, you have no reason to talk you about have, video games, dude. Right you now. lost <laughs> you lost your journalism like, license years yeah, ago, like, buddy. Well, I mean, I mean, I think bro. he gets his journalism license because he's that bad at fucking Cuphead. It made like, me remember that fucking video. It's so insane. It's so insane. You couldn't even like jump through the barricade. That's fucking crazy, dude. It's like, it's insane. actually like the most infuriating thing. I think I read the funniest comment I yeah. read was like. The first thing that you see upon going to hell is a full playthrough of Cuphead by that guy. No. <laughs> like you just the whole fucking playthrough. But it's like Twitch plays Cuphead at that point, dude. Yeah, I feel like that. It's just people just fucking with inputs. And the Doom one is just as bad, dude. I don't know. Oh, Doom one was just horrible. Doom, it's funny because I remember like when I saw the Doom thing. Mm-hmm. If you watch the NVIDIA, like NVIDIA made some fucking... I think I think they were actually talking about like shadow play or something. It wasn't even Doom related. They just used Doom for footage. And the guy at Nvidia who was playing fucking Doom was just like a fucking god, ultra violent, like ripping. And, yeah. Like it almost felt like I ripping saw Doom guy that. come to life and play the game. I was like, what the oh, fuck? It's, that's great. I love when they just destroy that. Yeah, but but like that's the whole sweet baby ink stuff in a nutshell. I. I really, I would have to see how far, you know, the only way to make the whole backlash stop is if I was running Sweet Baby Inc. like the company, I would just be like, all right, we got to find that fucking dipshit who made these tweets <laughs> in the first place. All, and we got to, you, you got to fucking throw out some, a, li- a little apology action. Okay. You yeah, gotta, absolutely. Got to fucking, got to, got to butter the <laughs> apology bread and eat that fucking sandwich, you know? <laughs> eat like, eat, eat your slice of humble pie. Yeah. Like, my, I, I really find it weird when you have a diversity firm and it's like, dude, I get it. We the Racism is still a problem. I'm not going to fucking yeah. sit here and pretend that it's not. It's still a problem. Yep. But mm-hmm. I don't think demonizing a group of people is going to help you any further. You know, like it's funny because like when I when I was like objective about the facts, I, one of the comments was like, Muda, white people will never accept you. I'm like, who? how fucking out of touch are you? Like, do you think that I made this video out of that? I'm like. You think that I? You think that I'm trying to be like an Uncle Tom to my own people? You know, how, you know what language I start off like a good chunk of my videos with my oh, own, boy. right? Like what the fuck? Uh, all like, I'm gonna yeah. all I'm gonna say oh. is, you know, I haven't looked at my skin color lately, but uh, you know, I I, I feel like I've been pretty accepting of you, Muda. I mean, I, I, but this thing, I don't look at like race when it comes to it. that. That's it's the weirdest thing how people take race so seriously in that sense because. I have never in my entire life. Okay, look, I grew up post 9/11. It wasn't that fun, you know, back in the day, but right. am I going to be resentful of people for shit that happened years ago? No. I've had one motto in life, which is like if people like I I, I, I actually chalk this up to any success I've had in life. Cuz you can either sit there and like take everything and like resent the world around you. Yeah. I just chose mm-hmm. to take all that and make good money and like fucking still not hate anybody. I'm like, dude, shit happens point is we we have to like point, yeah. if you're in this situation 
I don't think harboring grudges and running these things is ultimately beneficial to anyone's cause. If you want to actually progress as human beings in a society where we treat everyone equally, then it's mm-hmm. probably up to everyone to like settle their differences right here and now and be fucking mature about their shit. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that racism yeah. and a lot of these systemic issues don't exist. That would be stupid. Oh, they're definitely there. Yeah. They're there. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's also time to like start actually moving past it, start the whole healing process and whatnot. What's crazy mm-hmm. to me is the fact that it seems like more than ever, maybe I didn't realize, maybe I didn't recognize it as a kid or something like that, even though mm-hmm. I grew up in a relatively, despite being in Minnesota where it's plenty white, uh, I, I grew up in a pretty diverse uh, grade. And uh, I I mean, we accepted everybody. It, it, it As I grew up and as I essentially left my hometown that's when all this stuff started circulating around and i started hearing about all this stuff and it really feels like back then it wasn't so much an issue all of a sudden now it's just so hyper focused on this i really think and the politicians are to blame i for feel that. like oh, i agree i 100 oh, yeah, percent absolutely I feel like when we were kids, we don't notice that much because we, at least in my case, I lived in a, I grew up in a small fucking town. Mm-hmm. We didn't really have a much diversity. I am from Latin America, by the way. That's already a thing. Um, I'll be the first one to say that Argentina has a big racist problem, <laughs> racism problem, straight up. Uh, back in my hometown, I remember we were all, most of the Argentinian kids are either immigrants from people from Europe or somewhere now about um around america like around there yep yeah so if you most of the kids are like kind of like they kind of look white but the second someone who looks some some of y'all have been from germany come on (laughs) yeah i know (laughs) operation paperclip read about it we know that did you know oh did you know about the movie do you know about the movie metropolis uh i've heard this is the funniest fucking thing this is one metropolis is a 1927 german sci-fi movie that it's like one of the best sci-fi movies like from the time it was 27 it was one of the huge the the, the biggest the most uh, expensive one to the for the time uh it's a cinematic history thing the movie was lost for years this is a german movie the movie was lost for years until it was found complete in argentina what the that is kind of like mm, that's that's pretty sus man yeah, German dude, it movie came, in Argentina. It came from uh, it came from uh, the big man's personal stash. Operation Paperclip. I was saying. Well, back to what I was saying. As soon as anyone like uh, a new kid would enter, and he was like a tad darker in skin, mm-hmm. his nickname will always be the Spanish word for black. Oh, dude, here comes uh, the black kid, basically. Yeah, here comes yeah. And it's it's so insane. Like that that was so naturalized back then. I feel. I mean, like like Muda said, I blame politicians a hundred percent for all of this stuff. Oh, yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. it. I feel like uh, it's it's been getting worse over time. But I feel like uh, more in like the last I don't know, probably ten years since twenty fourteen ish is when I've really seen it start to boil up and uh, start to fester, really. Mm-hmm. And, uh, just, it's crazy to me that these people who, on both sides of the aisle, who say one thing, they all seem to want to just fight hate with hate. And... No. Hmm? At, at some well, what, you're you're never gonna get anywhere when you're when you're still hateful of anything. The only way to get past it is like hate harbors hate. Yeah, it's exactly. gonna be a circle. It's gonna be a, well, a, it's, it's, a cycle. It's not never gonna end. People like to say fight fire with fire, and it's like no 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 fighting fire with fire. Both fires put each other out eventually. This is literally just gasoline hitting gasoline, and there's a fucking bonfire in the middle of it. I mean, it's like the movie like if you ever watch American History X, it's just like that. Like the whole point of that movie was like. Nobody ever watched it. Uh, the main character was like a neo-Nazi. Yep. Um, and, well, the main character, his brother, is a neo-Nazi. He, and he's like the worst fucking neo-Nazi in the world. He goes to, like, prison yep. for killing a black guy. And in prison, he becomes really friendly with one. And he, he mends his ways. 
But like the whole thing is like once you once you have built that inside you and that sticks with you, it just mm. causes more pain anyway. Yep. So I'm not gonna spoil the movie. I highly recommend you guys watch it. It's Ooh. like a that sounds interesting. I want yeah, it's, it's American, yes. American History X. Is it's a very movie. very interesting movie. Um, most recently, a uh, speaking of politicians, a politician misquoted that particular mood, movie. Really? Yeah. They. Uh, oh my god. They didn't, they, the way they quoted it was essentially, they didn't realize that the entire point of the movie was the neo-Nazi realizing he's wrong. Oh, so he was just like, wow, he said the N-word base? Oh my God. No fucking way. What the he fuck? Se- the politician seemed to just conveniently forget the fact that, oh, the moral of the story was he realized that he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ah, ra- race isn't bad, but he's like based. Wait, hold on, hold on, yes. wait. What? I think you got the wrong message. <laughs> Either shit. that, or he stopped watching after the first it's like, thirty. It's like minutes. dudes that watch the boys, and it's like you know this Homelander guy. I really, I really resonate with him. Really, <laughs> boy, he really clicks with me. Like what? This, really? <laughs> this Homelander guy. God, I can really see myself in him. Like I like. Yo, you know, John I, Connor was in that movie. Holy shit! Nice. Yeah, John Connor was in the movie. But I remember oh. with like fucking Homelander, it's like I so I like I'll joke about him, be like yo, he's based as fuck. But like anybody that I actually come across, and it's like yeah, you know he's got a message. I'm like what message? He's like genuinely brain dead most of the fucking show. <laughs> like when he's running bot, he's like a complete idiot. Yeah. I still remember the boardroom meeting when it's like they walk in, it's like so what are you gonna do about Abita scores or whatever? And he's yeah. like, the fuck? fuck is that? The fuck? <laughs> like, it genuinely has no idea. So to uh, yeah, and 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 his response to not knowing it is, "Lady, I will literally fucking kill you." <laughs> like, no. what the fuck are you doing, making me look stupid? That's some ancient ass fucking way to govern, man, dude. Yeah. It's just government's the strongest. That's. But work. I guess that's where we can like just kind of tie down the fucking sweet baby ink stuff. There's not much I think out of it. Um, but you did say something about like censorship and like video games. I think that's like, mm. so what, what do you, what, what is like an example? Cause uh, so something that yeah, this, to think something that triggered, it, it triggered something in me was, uh, specifically Yu-Gi-Oh card games. And mm-hmm. I, I, you TCGs get, uh, censored all the time. Final oh, fantasy, I final fantasy oh, yeah. has been, uh, censored multiple times in, uh, it's tra- great in his games in general, I guess. I remember the whole Bravely Default skin thing. Yes, yep, Bravely Default. But uh, TCG, mm. like, uh, there's a card called Nightmare of Hell in Japan. Here in America, they call they call it, uh, no, they call it Sword of Hell. But here in America, they call it Sword of Nightmare. Because hell is a bad word. It has devil mm. connotations. Bro, I fucking hate Japan <laughs> for that reason, dude. Like... Just think about how fucked up of a society you have. Like, you got, like, hell cards, fucking... Game, <laughs> like, shouldn't Megami Tensei... Ba- Megami Tensei back in the day, you're fighting... Megami Tensei is so insane. You're fighting, like, God at the end of it. But then you got to blur dicks out of porn. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what, what sense is that? How does a society that comes up with, like, tentacle, like, rape porn and shit? And, like, head back, Also, like, blur dicks out. Like, it doesn't even make any sense. Like... You can't be like hella conservative in like one aspect. <laughs> yeah, but then just go out. Shit sure. in the other. <laughs> there was I don't know what was with Japan in like the eighties or something with like demons and devils in game because I yeah Shin Megami Tensei there was this one fucking game Devil's World as well. Yeah, uh, bro, we know exactly what's up with Japan, things. buddy. We 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 got a pretty good history over there. Yeah. They're- they're 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 a weird and look I, I love the japanese people watching you're, you're awesome but like i love them yeah like, countries have like their pluses and minus okay all right <laughs> your country's minus is like why you got to make your porn look like minecraft dude <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on here what are you gonna watch like <laughs> and shit? bro bro looks one like... of my favorite like I'm, I'm a big fan i'm a big fan of like censorship when it comes to like anime like i remember back in 2008 seeing these edits of like comparing episodes of one piece in in america to the japan japanese and it was so hilarious because they would like replace guns with like slingshot i don't even right, know what the fuck they'll like replace, weird they'll yeah replace super soakers yeah. <laughs> super soakers like my favorite was like this guy this guy named uh sanji i think it was from one piece 
that has the guy smokes. The guy goes around with the fucking cigarettes all around. And in the in the American version, the guy straight up always with the lollipop. Yep. <laughs> you see that? And it's so like what? I mean, I guess it could work. I don't know. But I don't remember the it's anime. Just funny. I don't remember the anime, but I know that there is an anime where uh, there's supposed to be a girl with a gun, or maybe it was Pokemon, where there's supposed to be someone with a gun. And instead, oh, Pokemon, of, yeah, there instead was an of having a gun, it's just finger guns, bang, bang. Oh, well, that's Yu Gi Oh! Remember, the, the one episode when the guys are like pointing at Kaiba, yes, but like, yes, they, they that's were supposed what I'm to have gone, like, actually, yeah. And <laughs> they're pointing at stop right there, the stop most right thing. there. Yeah, fuck. I, it's like, I, it's, I, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like Steven Spielberg, but like fucking ET, where he has to like replace shit with like walkie talkies. Oh, I remember that, yeah, yeah. Wait, the radios, they, e. they replace yeah. shotguns, e. yeah. ET, I don't know if you remember, they actually like, re edited some stuff. I didn't know the this. final one of the final scenes when they well, everyone's seen ET, like they, yep. they go flying with the bikes. Over the cops barricade. Well, the original the cops had shotguns in hand. But if you see all the revisions, if you see other revisions, they have like radios in hand, they change that. That's interesting. Well, one of my favorite one of my favorite changes, Muda, I remember when when we watched this again and we laughed for like twenty minutes. It's the the Greedo shoot first or Han shoot first. Oh <laughs> yeah. It's it's my favorite because you see like you see like the the film editing of hand of Han's head, you just do like this, but like so unnatural, it looks so bad. <laughs> unnatural, it just like moves the head and like barely dodges the shot. Like, <laughs> why the fuck would George Lucas even consider that? Like, what is? I mean, I've I heard there that apparently I don't know if it's real or not because I heard this lampoon everywhere. It's like, oh man, it makes Han look like a cold blooded killer when he's supposed to be a hero. Like, bro, the guy's a, a, guy's a, smuggler's, a smuggler's comeback. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah exactly. he, I don't, I don't see. Here's the thing in Star Wars, I don't get. Why some of these uh, characters are supposed to be seen as heroes? Some of these guys are legitimate assholes. Oh yeah, they're fighting a war. Sometimes they gotta fight dirty. Han, so, uh, Han literally did all that thing for money at the start. Like, yeah, of course he came around. He became a member of the resistance and all. But at the oh, first, like at the start, of the resistance. He's because he lost all of it. He had an L bank account after that. <laughs> he had like, an L bank. <laughs> yeah, they fucked him up. Well, kind of. <laughs> kind of too, yeah. yeah. That, that was one of my. That's my favorite edit, like that. Well, and then there's the shit, like, you know, they added the 3D animals to like Mos Eisley in Episode Four, and like all that stupid comedic mm -hmm. shit with CGI animals that looks like look like ass. Yeah. I don't know why they did that. Well, I, I feel like I feel like it's always just like, oh, we have access to better CGI. Let's just make it look better. Like, dude, we don't. Yeah. I don't want to sound like fucking nostalgia critic right now with like, <laughs> bro, why didn't you? But why didn't they get real dinosaurs in Jurassic fucking Park? <laughs> no, I mean like some CGI just looks like shit. You know? Yeah, I mean, when when it's in Star Wars, I like it when they use it to like enhance the the place. You remember uh, Cloud City? In the original, it was just like a white background, yep. but in the, the later versions, they added like a backdrop of cities that are also flying in the sky, like better light. It looks cool. It looks really good. But when you have the scene of... The, the, this is one of the scenes that was cut from the original movie when Han meets Jabba the Hutt for the first time. Uh, back then, that was the first movie. That is 1977. They didn't have the, the final design for Jabba the Hutt yet. It's literally just some fat dude. And they filmed that entire scene. They later cut it. But then they grabbed that scene, re-edited it, and added a CGI. For, first, a puppet, uh, Jabba the Hutt, to talk with, uh, with Han Solo. And it looks fucking awful. Then they did it again, a CGI Jabba the Hutt that looks fucking awful. And then they did it a third time with another Jabba the Hutt in CGI that looks even worse. I don't know why they keep fucking it up. They just cannot get it. <laughs> and my favorite part is that, again, they do that weird digital movement that they do with head. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there's a scene where Han like, walks around the guy. And because he's a human, it doesn't happen anything. But when it's Jabba, you know, he has the tail. So they digitally made him like step on the tail. And it looks so unnatural when he walks. <laughs> oh, man, it's so funny. The re-edits of Star Wars are like actually just hilarious to watch. They're so bad most of the time. Speaking of poor CGI, that just makes her. That just reminds me of the first rendition of what Sonic was supposed to look like. Oh boy! In the <laughs> movies, like. it, don't, don't, you don't you remember the original trailer? Oh, with God. with the Fucking teeth and everything. It all, it all it literally all just came back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all, it all just yeah, yeah. Back. Like I remember what well, like this was back when video game movies were still like seen in a bad light. I feel like that shit's been broken a while now. Yeah. Yep. I feel um, like Uwe Boll needs to make the third Sonic movie. 
We bowl needs to be postal five or something. Like that. Bro, <laughs> we bowl is fucking funny as fuck, bro. I think he's actually based. I like that. I like that. He's the guy. Oh, you don't like my movie? Well, let's Let fucking go to the ring, dude. Let's you. fucking go. <laughs> yes. Let's put up, put up your dudes. Uh, well, I remember. Well, back then, again, video game movies were not, were not over the curse still. Even though I really like the Mario movie. That's my movie is great. Fuck all, fuck all of you. Um, Wait, are you talking they about show the new fucking, one or the old one? The old one, dude. The okay, the good. cyberpunk good. Mario Brothers I can, movie. I can accept that. The new one yeah, is objectively so trash. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, so I can say. Yeah, please um, don't. They have that this poster of like Sonic with like human legs, like uh, on top of a bridge, and it looks so bad because it looks so like human. It look it looked uncanny valley. The legs look so unnatural, so skinny, and, and at the same time with like the curvature, like an actual leg. <laughs> Then they show the first trailer where Sonic looks like a like a, fuck I don't know like a, like a groundhog I don't know it looks terrible it, it had like those tiny eyes yep uh, teeth CGI was terrible the the teeth everything was awful <laughs> this is the first time that there's this conspiracy that apparently they listen to all the people shitting on the design and say okay let, we'll delay the movie we're gonna fix Sonic and then we'll get back with another trailer. I feel like that was genuine, to be honest, because I feel like there's a lot of stuff that they have to like prep in the background and then they have to like scrap to remake the new design. Yeah. Hopefully, I guess not too much. Uh, but the thing that happened is like they grabbed um, Tyson Hess, who is an artist who was in the Sonic community for like 2010. You know, the whole Knuckles and Chilada meme? Yeah. He, create, he created that shit in 2010. He made like silly, stupid Sonic comics, like really funny drone and the guy then eventually became such a good artist that became an official artist and now he's literally in charge of the main designs for the movie so they call him to redesign sonic and it's the best like live action sonic could ever see could ever looked i think oh yeah absolutely it, i think i think they nailed sonic um mm -hmm. imaru <laughs> talking about uh sonic's legs Made me rem made me remember something that we've never seen in any other uh, medium of Pokemon. What? And that is Darkrai's legs. Oh God, I remember that shit. <laughs> Fucking apparently, Darkrai's legs. Put, put an image there. Apparently, Darkrai <laughs> has legs, dude. Mm -hmm. Put an image of Darkrai's legs. I will, dude. Like they're all. dude. They're fine legs, dude. They're slender. They're thin. You could really you could really riz up someone with those. I don't know, man. <laughs> I remember seeing that. I remember, like, for a week straight, we said, hey, let's watch all the Pokemon movies. Yep. And uh, most of them were crap. I, I kind of gave up after Gen 4 because I, Gen 4 is my favorite, and all of the Gen 4 movies suck. All of the Gen 4 movies suck. Well, yeah, dude. You you and Muda had such a hate boner for Shaman. Shaman fucking sucks, dude. <laughs> Shaman fucking sucks. It's the worst fucking... I prefer Jirachi. I mean, Jirachi was at least kind of charming. Shaman is just a straight up piece of shit. Why? I'm glad he's dead because oh, he was Jesus. so cocky. So like, Whoa. yeah, I'm glad Jirachi's dead. I, I, I glad Shaman is dead. Bro. I'm not going to apologize to that. That's fucked up. Fuck Oak's letter. I'm not going to go to the fl fucking flower path to capture it. <laughs> I don't give a shit about Shaman. Dude. <laughs> dude, Shaman is awesome. No. Maybe not the, that particular. I think version. the only good Pokemon movies were the ones when we were kids. All the new ones are fucking ass. <laughs> I dude, I agree. Well, I what I can still watch uh I would rather Pokemon. Play Pokemon games today than watch the movies. <laughs> I I still I still well, maintain... you were never a Pokemon guy, so I don't know. Bro, I played Pokemon. I was a fucking kid like you. I wasn't dead inside. I stopped <laughs> playing around Diamond and Pearl. And after that everything sucked. You know, you know what, Imaru? You know what I'm surprised Muda wasn't severely into? Mm -hmm. Digimon World. Oh. Why? What, hey, Muda loves that game. And shit in it? No, because... <laughs> well... Fucking <laughs> 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 Oh, Mega Man EXE? I'm pretty sure you no, would be a fan dude, of that. <laughs> that, that it's, literally, it's literally like a... It's literally like a... Tamagotchi game on steroids. Man, you, you really think I fucking enjoy Tamagotchi? I feel like I feel like you would. Six hours each. <laughs> I, I'm not, no Tamagotchi I own lived past a fucking half a day. <laughs> to be fair, no, I man. never I never had a Tamagotchi growing up. You know very well what Muda was playing, dude. Back then, he was playing Most Wanted on the GBA, 
with the fucking Bro, uh, I, soldier boys. Yes, yes, I was. <laughs> no, dude, he was yeah. playing. What was that? What was that other stupid driving game he had you play? Underground. No, no the 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 chase one, the, the one most that, dangerous, scariest well, he chases. He definitely was playing that. Let's not. That, that one was that was that one was kind of fun. I'll, I'll be honest, that one was kind of fun. Know what's on my fucking sh- desk right now, this game cartridge. Take a guess what game cartridge. This no, is. no. What oh, is shit. it? I cannot see no, that. Just take a guess. Just take a guess. What do you think it could be? Oh, uh, it's fucking X versus Sever. No, bro. Even better. Oh even no. Better. What is it? Holy shit. Is it underground? What do you even have? Holy shit, what? Do you have a GBA the hype, there? You the hype. Fuck? Come on. Underground, I have something. By the way, everybody everybody watching. Yeah, he absolutely I, dumped I that wrong. I have here. This is like underground. underground. I actually oh, have shit. underground right here. Yeah, oh, my oh, wow. God. Just well, I have my I have my GBA here right here. Yo, what, what the fuck? What are you doing? You two are just pulling yeah, shit look. out of nowhere. Yeah, dude. You know what? Sick. Look, look at this game. You know what? <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> Kimco, what what is that? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Oh, make platoon. Dude, oh I shit, dude. That on my desk all the time. It's so Actually, good. what game is in this? Do you? Oh shit. What about this one, Kyle? I also have my. Yeah, but here. mine's special. It has Pokemon. Yeah, yours is gayer, maybe, man. It is gayer. <laughs> hey, by the way. We all literally we all just showing our shit right Link's now. Awakening. Yeah, Bro, oh, that's not a bad one. Bro, what about, what about oh. Pokemon Crystal, dude? Crystal? Yo, oh, dude, Lord, I have Rainbow Six on the Game Boy Color. I have Emerald. Rainbow Six. Well, what was that CD, CD Special Forces that I showed you the other day? That was also great. Dude, you got to get one of these. Wow. Analog pockets are so good. Oh, is that what you're playing what? on right now? Yeah, the analog pocket. Dude, that fucking screen oh, looks sick. sick. It's a good screen. Well, I don't. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. But oh yeah, there oh, you go. I can Look at see that. it. Oh yeah. Look at that shit. Yeah. Oh, well, you can tell he has like a fresh fucking set of double A's in that bitch. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that, shit. That, <laughs> that, oh, <laughs> that red oh my the god. As fuck. Here they are. Fuck. I was looking for my rechargeable batteries. Fuck. <laughs> 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 they were on my fucking game board. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I don't. This just turned into a showcase of like the the shittiest Nintendo Shield shit Bro, that we but can get. Do you guys have like colors on your Gizmondo? All right. Okay, I cannot beat that, man. Fuck. <laughs> you know what? I I might be able to beat that. You're not gonna beat the Gizmondo. Bro. All right. You want you want to see the the Latin American video game experience? Oh my Dual god! Dual Masters, with the pack still in it. Wow! Wow! <laughs> the game with the the, the cutscenes. It's so bad. Dude, you want to see the, the the legitimate American PlayStation 2 uh, experience? This is here, right here. Oh, modern this is what no, our game... The unmarked is, white this envelope. Is, <laughs> this is how we bought our games. This is how we bought our games, dude. Max Bell. No, <laughs> Yo, 420! <laughs> <laughs> this is, oh, yeah, this is Max Payne 2, dude. Oh, no, shit. No, what the fuck? Mars. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is my 2006 thing. Bro, bro <laughs> just doxed himself. Oh boy, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to blur that. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, chill. Yeah, I don't know where this begin sh- showing shit. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, yeah, I'm loading up some sticky balls right now. Why did you play <laughs> some sticky balls? It's the most played game on the Gizmondo. Gizmondo. I don't know why, but I remember when Kyle yeah, just now mentioned that he doesn't re- listen to a lot of podca- podcasts. Uh, me neither. I only listen to one called The Adventures of uh, Danny and Mike, which is a podcast run by uh, uh, the the kids who play the main characters in Adventures of Pin and Pete. I feel like really you've chill, shown me really that. chill podcast. Really, really chill podcast. It's still going. It's been going for ten years. But then I just remember the Cinemassacre podcast, which might be one of the worst podcasts. Like I absolutely fucking love James Rolfe. I love the guy to death. But I don't think I've seen a podcast with less chemistry like it's insane people would just there talk to uh, people would get together talk about shit that it was so niche they wouldn't even care and they would just like james would you be there saying oh yeah 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 <laughs> and that's it one of my favorites <laughs> was an episode an episode with scott the was scott the was was in one episode really yeah you know who oh, wasn't in that awesome. episode what yeah you know who wasn't in that episode who James Rolfe. 
<laughs> it was an episode with Scott the Wasp, but not James Rolfe. <laughs> it was not there. He was filming Dude, something. Hey. And, and the funniest thing, it was like Scott the Wasp talks about video game movies. And they would talk about movies that I'm sh like 90% sure Scott had no fucking idea. Scott I've never seen before, and they somehow made that shit last like 40 minutes. Like, it's, hey, dude. It was so I'm terrible. Say, it lasted 40 episodes, and then it died. All I'm going to say, dude, is that uh, we haven't seen James Rolfe and Scott the Waz in the same room together. Well, They, they might be the same together. person. They made a few videos together, yeah. They made a James and Mike Monday episode. So, <laughs> me and the boys here have been... On a heavy ass binge of the new season of Rainbow Six Siege, and let me tell you, let me, let me say this: solo queuing has never been such a roller coaster of emotions. Imaru, oh you saw the screenshot I sent you earlier today, mm -hmm. where I absolutely can I can I just I don't want to I don't want to like cut you off like this, but. As soon as he said solo queue, I'm playing Cyberpunk as we record this, and the Spanish radio station kicked in, and all I could think of was the Brazilians not reinforced. <laughs> <laughs> like, as soon as you said quick view, it's like, I hear like, Trente principales, and then it's like fucking just music. I'm like, oh God, just leave me alone. Go ahead. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> clapped the cheeks of a team today, going seven kills, zero deaths, and beating that team 4-0. To immediately the next two games in a row being with the most brain dead, stupid, non reinforcing, mirror roaming motherfuckers the, I have ever seen. The mirror roaming dude. dude that I, kills I, me. Oh. The mirror roaming so much. Like, oh. like fucking, they put those fucking black mirrors up in the most dumb positions <laughs> in the world. And I just leave them. Like, what's the fucking point of playing the operator? Like, yeah. what the fuck? Also, be because they fucking just make the reinforcement wall, put the mirror, and then leave the other unreinforced. Un un like, bro, they're going to breach the shit out. If it's like an outside wall, okay, maybe you can try that. But if, like, it's one of the walls that's straight up right next to the bomb you're trying to defend. How the fuck do you defend that shit when it's not reinforced? See, what I love is that... So those... Mira players get mad when I reinforce. Like, bro, we got to defend... God damn it. Well, that's what that's what pisses me off is that they'll set that up. They'll they'll barricade one wall, mirror window, leave the other one soft, and it's like, and then they go and roam, and they're like, "You, you over here, you sit by this window and you watch it." It's like, no, get the fuck over here and watch this fucking window. Yeah. Oh, you want me to do? Okay, you just reinforce that wall. There. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fuck it. That's how I deal with it. I'll, I'll... I, I just I just cannot understand like the fucking people who are just like constantly like they're attacking on defense like your whole fucking job <laughs> is to sit on site. <laughs> Let them come in, you know, like what the fuck? Well, we talk about this before. It's because they're they're so kill hungry. They think this is fucking cut, and they go for the kills because that's that's what they want. They want to get the even fucking Call of Duty MVPs. players are a little better than that, boys. Like, I Dude, played, at least I Call of Duty players camp. Yeah. <laughs> Which At is least. what I wish the Siege players did! <laughs> right? Fucking camp on site! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Attacking is so wild too. Like, okay, so Siege is a game where team composition is like the most important thing in the world. If you don't have a good team comp, it doesn't fucking matter what, what's gonna happen. You might get lucky with like a crack addict playing with you, like an Adderall Andy, who's just like <laughs> insta headshot all the time. Maybe. But if you don't have a good team like I always say this. I'm like, you don't have to be a good shot at Siege. You just have to be able to, like, manipulate the, the site. Like, the whole point of Siege is, as an attacker, your whole goal is to foil the defense, right? It's to, like, pressure them. Nothing pressures the defense more than just opening up hard walls, fucking mm -hmm. getting rid of traps. Like, these people are literally scared shitless and sitting in their fucking corners. And as a defender, <laughs> your whole job is to defend good enough to foil whatever attacker plans happen. So whether that be, you know, bandit tricking, whether that be making sure your walls stay up, dwindling the time down to 45 seconds where, like, yep. the attacking team. When I used to play with, like, Rob and the guys, like, this was, this was, like, 2019 or something. Yep. One of the best things about Siege was um, Tyler, the guy we'd play with, Jerry Stank, he would, like, yep. place down all the cap cans and the frost mats. And he would always tell me, Muda, 45 seconds. Every player forgets about cap can. Every player forgets about frost. So you just yep. literally yep. jump in, get clapped mm -hmm. by bear traps, blown up by satchel charges. It's like there's such a strategy. 
And it all depends mm -hmm. on how good you synergize with your team, right? Like, there's no Mute without Castle. There's no Thatcher without Thermite. And, like, the fun part, the, the reason why I play Siege for thousands of hours over Counter-Strike is Counter-Strike, I feel like it all boils down eventually to, like, who controls the economy, which isn't Ooh. that difficult to do. And it just boils down to, like, straight-up gunplay, which some people enjoy. Yeah. Siege yeah. is all about, like, every match really can be dynamic. You know, when we're in... Like, even if you break through the same site, it's never in the same way, I find. You're mm -hmm. always trying something new. And at any given moment, like... It's always the best parts about Siege is when like the matches are like balanced where like when we're attacking they actually have a good defending team and we're constantly pressuring one another, you know? Like I can feel on Chalet when there's like a fucking tug of war between us breaching bottom floor and like the bandit scared shitless putting down his fucking shock charges <laughs> and then once the thermites going we're all in like fucking walls open. Yeah. Gun time. You see, that's what you that's what you said the difference between Siege and, and Counter-Strike. Uh it's always different the way to like how you tackle the way you attack mm -hmm. how the way you defend and everything you know what's not different playing those two the millionth time yeah on cs well yeah. here's the thing here here's part of the reason why i personally love siege over counter-strike and it has to do mm -hmm. with the fact that there's actually counters okay count gu guns guns don't counter guns in counter-strike players counter players in counter-strike and that just comes down to your skill level in mm -hmm. siege you can very legitimately have uh a player uh generally speaking i'm usually the more uh i'm usually the more reliable gun uh in our group yeah. and muda tends to be a very reliable support slash shield operator Muda can probably beat me nine times out of ten because he knows how to manipulate the site, he knows how to manipulate the time, and he knows how to stall somebody out. Mm -hmm. I think the thing about that game is also, like, compared to... I, well, every game requires sense of the environment. I think Siege takes it to, like, six times. Absolutely. Because usually you're always wondering, like, oh, man, which walls are... Oh, shit, that wall's, like, soft, that wall's hard... It's always dynamic in your head because you have to run through so many different possibilities in your head, right? Like, oh yeah. I think the best moments of the game is like twenty seconds in, bombs planted. I'm Monty one on one, yep. and I have to like mentally remember. I'm like, what's the entry points? What's the transitions? Where can this guy get me from? And Who like, am I up against? What is his sense, gadgets? Yeah. Well, like one of the things that helps out is like, like you, you calm down, you think through it. And nothing is more fucking satisfying. Then just like, clutching it out. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Not only that, but not allowing them to do anything. Well, like, I remember yeah. there was, they block. we blocked so many entrances that there was only one place in that match. We planted, and the guy was just behind that one entrance, and I just sat there with an OSA window, just like moving the mouse, yep, like, yep. no, no, no. <laughs> and the guy couldn't fucking move. I, it was like, yeah, that's perfect. You, I don't even need the kill. I don't I think, want the I kill. England the other night, we were playing on like Border, and it was like fucking their whole team was filled with entry fraggers like Ash. And like, by the end of it, I was just like, all of us were sitting in our corners and I'm just like, Clash, just like, just tasing mm -hmm. Ash. Yep. And she's like, fuck you guys. Like, they can't <laughs> enter because they didn't, what they didn't do in the game was they didn't bring somebody to EMP the Clash and like, aggressor. They didn't do any of it. They didn't, they didn't bring, bring a counter. Well, that's just it. They didn't yeah. bring, they didn't bring a Zofia. They didn't yeah. bring a, uh, uh, whatever her name is, the sniper. Capital. They didn't bring Capital. Yeah. Um, well, Kelly. Today I learned a great counter to Clash. So if we're ever going up mm -hmm. against her, I bring Monty. One of you guys bring an EMP. So whether that be Thatcher or another operator with an EMP grenade, you EMP oh, her once. Oh, you can bully her. You EMP her once, and as Monty, I just jump in and push her back, and yep. she just falls down onto the ground, and you dump her full of bullets. Done. Interesting. Yeah. I, I didn't think about that, but yeah, that would render her basically useless. Um, Oryx is also not a great, uh, shield, uh, counter, but he is a shield counter if you use him that way. Mm -hmm. Um, funny enough, I actually, uh, found out the other day, um, I love Kali. I think Kali is a great operator, uh, for specific maps. I found out the other day that apparently... Kali is pretty much the only operator that uh, Charlie will play. 
what, Charlie Kali? plays snipers? <laughs> yeah, that Kali is all pretty much all Charlie will ever play. Because the thing with Charlie is like I I love him, but he's like mostly a gunplay kind of guy. Yep. And I'm like I feel like. I feel like if I was playing with him, I'd, I'd definitely be like, bro, you got to switch off. To, like, we got to talk about team synergies or something. Yep. Because <laughs> that's one of the things we talk about every night when we're doing it. It's like, all right, we're going to raid the site, so we switch off the operators that work with each other. Yep. And I think that yeah, works yeah. really well for us. You know, it's like, because there are times where if I wanted to only play Monty, I would, but then that's not being a team player. It's like, all right, I'm going to bring something exactly. that assists yeah. somebody else out. Like the night when we were getting fucked on a chalet, because of the runouts, so I was like, all right, I'll play two extra claymores with you, Mario. We'll plug yep, up every yep. fucking entry point. And that saved us, I think, at least three times against one of their shitty vigil plays or something. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, and the only reason I bring up Charlie is that one trick, he's not a one trick pony, but people who quote unquote main somebody are only ever a detriment in this game. Because mm-hmm. Kali does not fit every situation. She does. She. It's basically putting a square into a round hole. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Kali, it probably isn't the right choice. You could probably take any host of number of other attackers. Shit, I'd rather see, um, for example, depending on the map, I'd rather see a... I mean, you'll never see a Fenrir, so let's not even talk about that. <laughs> like, literally, the, there's... What do we have now? 50 operators? Uh, about, yeah. Uh, no, we have 60 something. something. Yeah. Between attack and defense, yeah. yeah. People, 35 attack, 34 defender, I think. When I see a person choose the same operator three times in a row on one side, I'm like... You're not adapting to the enemy team. The enemy team knows what works. That's why they're choosing it. You need to choose counters to that. And basically, basically, it's it's a big... It's not so much a chess match as it is a game of ebb and flow. If they're, if they're bringing... Uh, if they're bringing uh, hard breachers, you bring mute. You bring... Uh, you bring uh, whatever his name is. Castle Bandit, everyone. Castle Cade. Bandit, mm-hmm. Cade. You bring them. You bring Turborow. If they're not playing those, okay, cool. We can we can make all the walls solid. Bring Trap Ops. Chances are they're playing aggressive. And that's yeah, something that it. I fail to see from a <clears throat> lot of players is that they're always like, I have to play Caviera. I have to play this Operator. And it's just like no, that oh, you don't need to. That's not how the game is played. But make them understand yeah, like, that. I haven't dude. seen you play. You're a Caviera kind of guy, and I haven't seen you play it at all, pretty much this season. Right, yeah, it, for real. That's because I haven't be- played Vigil at all either. That's because yeah. Caviera. I is, barely play Frost. Here, here's 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 what I like to say about Caviera. A person who knows how to play Caviera, Caviera is an A tier operator. You go, but that's if you go up against a team that separates and goes and splinters off and does their own thing. If you run into a group of two, three of them, you're fucked. Oh, you're fucked. You're fucked. <laughs> and on top of that, if they're running off in twos and threes, great. Even if I kill both of them, I'm not using my ability. And if I'm not using my ability, that is just a body with a gun. The abilities are an addition to your character. So by not having the ability to use mine, choose anybody else that's going to secure site better. Yeah. I would really like, like, it would be cool to have Jordan in this conversation because I, I would like to, like, compare this composition to, to Siege to, like, League. That was a game he used to play more. Because I'm pretty sure the same problem is there. I feel like they could be kind of similar to the runs here. League is interesting. League is very interesting in the fact that, yes, to an extent, there is a sort of, like, counter system to it. But that is... And League is a game that relies heavily on crowd control and the fact that you buy items. 
So there's an economy to that game too. So it's very interesting mm-hmm. in the fact that yes, you can have a single character can counter a single character, but not necessarily because that character could build in a way that allows them to go even with their counter. Mm-hmm. So it's just mm-hmm. league is very interesting in that way in that, uh, in the fact that the counter system in that one is not nearly as balanced as the counter system in sieges. Mm-hmm. And it's part of the reason why I, I laugh every time uh, we see a Fenrir ban. I don't understand it. He, He's good. People just he's, people just don't know how to counter it. He's good. He's not that great though. I've actually started watching stuff on him because I when he's not banned, I would love to be able to play him and understand him. And I'm quickly realizing that he's like a B tier A tier operator. He isn't he, with the amount of bans he gets. You would think that he's like S tier Jaeger with an ACOG kind of dominant, but he's not. Mm-hmm. His his ability is cool, but it's 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 nothing special. Basically, all it does uh, when you get hit with it, obviously it affects you. You start coughing, and that gives you audio cues. That's and audio cues are very very powerful in Siege, but I don't know being banned every single time over. You know, some other operators that, in my opinion, could probably use the ban a lot more, like Aruni. Aruni's uh, Surya Gates are incredibly powerful for stopping pushes in their tracks. And on top of that, mm-hmm. if you want to get rid of her Surya Gate, you have, to, you have to knock it down. They can't be destroyed. And by knocking it down, well, the entire team knows exactly where you are now, where you're trying to breach through. So it's it's one of those things where I'm just like, why why are we banning why are we banning Fenrir so much? Is it because we're in fucking wet paper three? Is that is that's what is that why we're so afraid of them? They watched one Invitational and they saw like a high level Fenrir play. Yeah, they, like, <laughs> they fear like everyone's gonna play like that and oh man. And yeah, I just, bro, when, like, uh, who was it? Um, I mean Jaeger with an ACOG. That dude was fucking broken. Me and Muda remember those days. That that shit was yep. busted. Uh, I don't even remember what I don't remember what uh, Jaeger's weapon is. Is it the? Uh... It is the. It is. It's an AR. I forget which one it is, but it's an assault rifle. Right. I, I, Jaeger. I don't think it's. Launch. I don't I remember th- like a little bit of it. Yeah. Um. I mean, there's a few. There's a few characters that were just absolutely game breaking on launch. That honestly, the one character I thought would be game breaking on launch that wasn't, uh, honestly, was Warden. I-, I thought he would be way more dominant than he ever became. Honestly, well, I think he, he's very situational. That's he's thing, he's too. more relevant now than he was back then. Situational, bro. Every round we played had Ying. I'd say he's a fucking necessity now. Oh yeah. Well, with, maybe it depends. Yeah. With with uh with the LMG rework, uh that came a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But with the LMG rework and the fact that Ying's weapons are now actually really good, especially her her uh, light machine gun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I warden as soon as you as soon as you get wind that they're using uh Ying, I I agree. I think Warden should be a go to operator now. And it's just it's it's a weird I, I think it's funny how ban how that works in terms of like bands and stuff. How uh just one little tweak caused Ying to be relevant again. And as a result of her being relevant, all of a sudden Warden, by by default, being the only real counter to it, mm-hmm. now becomes mm-hmm. relevant as well. That's awesome. I love shit like that. Especially mostly because we got trounced by Yings yesterday, so now we're, we're oh, still dude, pretty mad we about it. <laughs> we got fucking slapped <laughs> around by them, man. Oh, bro. And we're probably going to get slapped around tonight, too. 
Ying, maybe. I, dude, I'm saying it. Ying is... I think Ying is one of the best operators to play right now. She's such a fucking awful bitch. Sorry. Damn. Is that really how you feel? Yeah, dude. Who the fuck? I, the Candela just blinds you no matter what. Of course I fucking hate her. <laughs> you okay, can't but... away from it. It's just a, no matter what, you're supposed to fucking see blinding white. You know what? There's we can... no counter. How, how we end this... Let's talk about the fact that nobody seems to know how to counter your fucking shields. Because That's the they're fucking part. retarded. <laughs> because they don't bring Capitan. Because they don't bring smoke. You know what? I'm bitching about Ying. All right, whatever. You don't need Warden for Ying, okay? Warden's an excessive. You know what you need for fucking Ying? Jaeger. You know how many fucking people bring Jaeger? Fat zero now. Zero. <laughs> you know, I'm going to play Jaeger tonight. I'm going to play Jaeger all night now. <laughs> I swear to God, if that gives us a higher win delta, I'm maining Jaeger forever. <laughs> Love that we were just talking about team comp. It's like, no, I'm gonna fucking play Jaeger now. <laughs> no, be, but okay. Think about how useful Jaeger is. Like flash grenade, not getting through. Fuse. Well, that's get why the it's getting banned. Fuck out of here. You stun grenade. Get the fuck out. Ying. Get the fuck out of here. Every ace. We, well, ace probably wouldn't be effective. But let's say that's a brain dead ace. Get the fuck out. It's a everyone. brain dead ace. Capitao. <laughs> I didn't even realize this. Jaeger counters Capiteo. Yeah, he does. Fucking yeah. insane. So when you're playing Clash, bring a Jaeger. So even if they bring Capiteo, it's like, whatever, who cares, dumbass? <laughs> what, are you going to poison me with what? <laughs> it's so sick. See, that's the, fun, that's, that's the fun part that I... That's something that I love about this is the fact that everybody, everybody that we play against that you bring out Monty or Clash against immediately... They get so fucking toxic in the chat. Bro, I have people in my YouTube comments who are like, well, I lost respect, you play Clash. I'm like, bro, I'm getting the fucking wins right now. I don't give a <laughs> fuck what you think, bitch. All right, I'm climbing up. <laughs> what? Dude, why? I love that shit. Here's the they thing. They get mad at it, too. That's the funniest part. Here's the thing. Why is it so bad that you play a shield op? Learn how to counter it simple if you see that they're playing shield yeah bring smoke brings bring, no smoke is a uh, defending side so well, yeah. yeah if you're bringing monty, bring yeah, monty. Well, monty yeah just Cap bring... for clash smoke for monty yep simple uh for cla for cla there's way more counters for clash than there is monty uh you got on on attack on that side you've got uh you got capital you got Oh, Jesus Christ. You've got, uh, well, like you said earlier, apparently you, uh, Monty can actually counter Clash if you bring uh, EMPs. Yeah. That's where I walk in. <laughs> I, dude, I want to see that fight now. I want to see, I want there to be a Monty versus Clash tonight. <clears throat> Let's fucking go. Metapod on Metapod. Nah, dude, that's like Metapod on Kakuna because at least uh, Clash can attack. A little bit. No, I... Yeah, nah, dude. Siege is... I don't know, dude. Maybe it's just... Consuming right now. Maybe it's just the rank we're in, but it's it really does feel like everybody is just fucking brain dead. I haven't... I really haven't met anybody where I'm just like, yes, this is a good compliment to our stack. Well, we have, but the thing is that, oh, guys, we're going to play together later. Yeah, I'm never going to see this human ever again in my life. <laughs> Bro, so like, we played with two guys like, that were, like, really awesome. chill. And yeah, like, yeah, we played with these two guys that were, like, really chill, really good players. Like, oh, man, I'm going to add you. Yeah, we're going to add so you. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We'd never see, we'd never, <laughs> never going to see each other again, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, dude, I love that. I love the fact that, and then you want to know what the fucking opposite is? You meet these really cool guys. But alternatively, if they turned out to be the most toxic assholes ever, you will oh, yeah. guaranteed see them in the next match. Oh, man, of course. If you queue up immediately after, you will guaranteed see them. No, no, not only that, but they're going to suck ass in your team. And the next the next match, when you see them in the enemy they're team, gonna they're going to be like top you. fragger, 15 kills. <laughs> like, yeah, of course. It's like you're never going to activate God. the aimbot when you're on my team. But oh, as soon as you're Yeah, man. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> it will be so easy. Oh, man, dude. I mean, yeah. 
I I'm gonna be real with you. I can't wait till uh, Deimos is allowed to be banned. I'm I'm gonna be real with you. I'm pretty sick of him already. I don't even know when that's gonna be. Deimos. 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 Oh yeah, that guy. What you're annoyed I don't, by him? I'm annoyed by him. Bro, don't you just love the one v one operator? I here's the thing, one v one operator isn't that bad. It's the fact that there's so many soft floors in the game. Oh yeah, the fact you can't that reinforce the floor. <laughs> the fact that he can come up underneath you and just be like, "Pop, pop, bitch." <laughs> Muda, Muda's been playing a little bit of Deimos lately. I've been fucking rocking with him, dude. Have you winning any of those one v ones? No. <laughs> <laughs> no i don't use him to 1v1 what i do is i just usually like pressure somebody so they're just running around Ito. like a fucking idiot on site and then usually somebody else will grab the death mark kill i don't i don't do the 1v1 shit i just use it to like freak people out like if there's like a caviaros like somebody's like playing vigil or something i'm like okay i guess we know where you're at now so yeah makes so, sense just to freak them up yeah but and, and you know what's funny it's like there's some vigils that just don't even know how to count they can hard counter demos they just don't activate their fucking shit i'm like what <laughs> i you didn't realize that really me. yeah vigil wow you can't do demo because vigil has the drone masking but some yeah of these yeah just don't even activate their erc's or whatever it's funny how many vigils I've played who've never used the ability. I'm like, what's the fucking point? It, oh, look, that, the that's, a, that's the exact dude. That's the exact same thing with playing a Caviera who can't get interrogations. It's just a body with a gun at that point. Oh no, no, they they do get interrogations, but only whether it's on the enemy team. Yeah, well, yeah. So when one of our guys is playing Ash and he thinks he's super good, but he's like, "Oh shit, I got into," and they'll tell you they're getting interrogated right at the last second of the bar. Right, yeah. so you're deep in, and it's like, "Oh, we've been interrogated. We we're already seeing the year location is marked," and he's like, "Guys, I've been interrogated." I'm like, "Yeah, no shit, dumbass. yeah, no I shit, we, fuck yeah. <laughs> we fucking know." <laughs> what do you mean? I'm being interrogated, yeah. bitch. You've already had your throat cut. <laughs> Absolutely, some of the worst play. I, 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 every time I see Ash being played, it's either like the fucking greatest old time siege player who knows what they're doing, or it's a fucking like deformed eleven year old playing the fucking game. It's no one or the other. No, no in between. No fucking in between. Not a single in between, dude. So, Muda, before we end this, mm -hmm. I have to know. Now that you and Boogie have talked on us on a podcast together okay yeah. when are we getting him in the stack bro boogie doesn't play video games boogie doesn't bullshit. Fucking touch games what are you talking bullshit what? bro he plays magic he plays the fucking nintendo gathering. dude dude he's selling his magic the gathering because he, he's broke he plays fucking pac-man and shit that's all you you want to see you want to sit boogie down on siege yeah you want to have like bro he's do you Bro, really? He, he yes. Can't. He can't play Siege with us. He literally can't. Why? Because he cannot. He wouldn't understand the mechanics for the game, dude. He <laughs> wouldn't even know how to play Monty. Dude, there's no money involved in this. Of course, he'd be able to understand it. Uh, that's, that's actually a good point. Yeah, maybe. He doesn't have to. <laughs> he doesn't have to understand mechanics. He doesn't I don't have think, to. I don't think Boogie has ever played like a competitive shooter. I actually don't know what the fuck he plays. Like, to be honest with you, I have no idea. I don't think what he's he about. Touches. I feel like he plays Nintendo shit, maybe. I don't know. I mean, like, he'll talk about, like, oh, I'm playing, like, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or something. But I don't ever see him, like, talk about the game, you know? like. So you're not but, sure if he's actually doing it or just saying it to fit in? I think you don't he talk says about it the games. Fit in. I think he really says it to fit in because it's like, you like, okay, I play video games. Like, even if I don't make a video of, like, FF7, I'll post screenshots all the time of the games i'm playing i'm like dude i don't ever see like but i i'll like if you ask me something about a game like if we're playing dragon's dogma 2 which is coming out like friday and yep. we're playing it like i'll have shit to say because i'll be actively playing it you know yep, like, i yep. don't know if he yeah. actually even plays video games i don't know what he does other than like fucking watching the, the most like soy tv shows imaginable and fucking <laughs> that's it like bro i, I I know he does traveling. He does a lot of like going. So, so okay, we tried that on the podcast once, and it's like, he's like, I'm out, like I'm out for the weekend, and it was the same weekend that he was taking a photo with fucking EDP. So he's out in like fucking Ohio and shit, Cleveland or whatever, 
um, or, or something. He was like out and about. And uh, he does like a lot of traveling for somebody that like has no money. Well, not not no money. It's I just don't. he does a lot of traveling for somebody that like is kind of inverted, I guess, or in, yeah. introverted. Has that much? Right? How much? How many issues with money? Yeah, it's like this guy's like lot of this guy's like you know I like uh, I'm a gamer, I'm a nerd, I stay inside. I'm like, you know, if I really look at, it, I'm like this motherfucker probably does more traveling than like I do. Like he's always on the fucking road, like going to a fucking convention and shit. And I guess his explanation a, is like invited or as a guest or well he just gets invited a, and they, I think they pay for his hotel or something but it's just like okay I'm like uh, I'm like I guess it's cool and all you can do it I, I I know quite a few people that are in the like the convention circuit so that, that, that is possible I, I like the new boogie now I like the fact that he's like a total degenerate like Hoomer. I love that <laughs> fucking boogie too I don't like the fake Mister Rogers boogie I like the one where he's like. Yeah, let's talk about butt plugs and anal fixing. I'm like, because because I know that's what he's about, you know. Like I know that. He's, yeah, dude, he the, has the like, facade is off. Like the mask is down now. Like yeah. He has like a fucked up sense of humor. Like I'm not even joking when I say we have a fucked up sense of humor. Like you people in the podcast will never know the kind of shit that we say behind the scenes. Because <laughs> yeah, Boogie, unironically, is more fucked up than all of us. Like he has a real like fucked up 4chan fucking brain. Like he is. If you if you sat him down, he probably sounds like he's from art like four chan's pole board. Like he's a fucking weird guy. Like he'll say some fucked up shit. We had him on the podcast and like he he was the only guest, <laughs> only guest we've ever had who was like he's like the N word is just a word and we're like, Oh fucking hell. I <laughs> like, <love. laughs> like, like it was the only time on the podcast where like I think all of us were like, Okay, Boogie, like ra- rain it back a little bit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Bo- like he's, boogie, he, boogie, he, say psych, <laughs> say psych right boogie, now, stop. man. <laughs> Fucking stop. Like, he tries to make a point about it. Like, I guess the point is kind of like, oh, it's just a word. And we're, we're like, yeah, it's just a word if you scream it in the fucking vacuum of your house. But not if you're, like, on a fucking massive stream or something, yeah, you know? Like, it's what fucking, the fuck? It's fucking, oh, my God, it's just etiquette. Just be a fucking person, I guess. Also, yeah, something, that's not a I'm going to be real with you. Something that absolutely disgusted me was the fact that he was actually using the proper words for, uh, you know, the kitty diddlers. He yeah. was using he was using the politically correct terminology for them. Bro, this is the thing I don't get. Like, he'll say, like, maps and shit. It's like, dude, I don't want the boogie that's, like, fucking safe for... You're not getting fucking invited to PAX or any of these conventions anymore. You don't gotta play nice, okay? Dude, even when I even when I'm getting invited to conventions, I'm still talking about butt plugs and crazy shit. Absolutely. But Boogie, you're not getting invited, so just fucking be a raunchy bitch. That's all that matters. <laughs> just be raunchy, dude. That's all. Be that you, matters. dude. Yeah. Fuck it, yeah. <laughs> like behind the scenes, like bro. Okay, we're on, he's the only guest where he's like trying to justify the whole N word <laughs> stuff to us. And like, okay, we've had fucking weird guests on the podcast. We've, uh. we've had, we've had, fu- we. My favorite guest ever was No Care. I don't know if you guys ever watched that episode. No care if it was the funniest fucking dude we ever had. Ah. He's from Minnesota. He did yep. the he did the one where he's like sleeping with his mom videos. Like he's like yes. crack on crack. Yep. Like this dude went to a fucking he did like a video where he goes to like he does like a home and garden television show. He's like best places to piss and shit. And yep. he goes to like, yep. actual, like fucking, <laughs> he goes to like this coffee shop bathroom, takes out a cookie. He's like we're gonna do the sniff check. Wipes it on the seat, shoves it in his mouth. Dude is a filthy <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, filthy God. fucking. He goes. He goes to a grease trap and starts drinking. Him, him and his mom. Creepy, crazy dude. Great That's guess, awesome. All right. That's awesome. His sense of humor is somehow like boogies is more fucked. Like that's the boogie I want. Just be fucked up. Be yourself. Be real. You know, be who <laughs> At you this are. Point, yeah. You know, like, and I feel like when we had him on that show, when we had him on our podcast, it's like part of his like. 4chan waves was breaking out i'm like just go dude but don't go too far like don't be screaming the fucking yeah. word. like we want to want to monetize this episode we gotta, go off but yeah. not that <laughs> off like i don't keep it in check a do, little bit we do not want to have to like mute out your entire audio track yeah i'm like dude it's just, he is he can be a weird guy i think what i think what's weird about him too is like he comes on and i think this is the really creepy shit it's like him and his like girlfriend who are like very big age difference Yep. And he's like, he's just sitting over there, like, you people are jealous that I'm like fucking these virgin girls, and I'm like, boogie, you might wanna, what might wanna up? whittle that one down there. <laughs> You're like, cause it's fucking hilarious. Like, if you took up boogie's age, I think boogie's like getting to his fifties. 
he's probably like 10 years younger than my fucking dad, you know, like 10, 11, Ooh. something, oh. you know, like my dad, oh, no. and my dad is an old dude now, you know, my dad is an older guy, you know, he's not, you know, but Boogie is like around a decade younger than that. So I'm like kind of looking at him like, bro, you're, you're that old fucking this like 20 year old girl. Now I think she's 20 now. And like, dude, you can tell the girls let's, all there. Like, let's, let's get real here. He ain't. He ain't really doing her. He ha- He doesn't. He'd have to Bro, put an air. Bro, he's doing hand and mouth stuff. I know. Yeah, no, dude. He'd have to put an Apple Air tag on his dick to find it. Oh my god. <laughs> no, but but like but you know the thing with the thing with Boogie is like having him on. It's like I feel like what, what really fucks with me the most is the thing that fucks with me the most about him is like he, you can give him as much advice as you want but i don't think he's ever he loves being the victim like i see he's like gets off on oh yeah him. he's he's addicted to it yeah loves that shit yeah that i know so i and, and i think like part of it is like you know that when nux was like giving him an idea i'm like all right go off man i mean fucking, oh dude I'm, dude like, I, I like basically <laughs> the show i like sit back i'm like all right fucking convert him come on now i'm it. telling you right now dude <laughs> Nux's idea of him making videos reacting the to fat people? Yeah. Fat, the my my 500 pound uh, videos uh, from TLC mm-hmm. fucking golden because uh, I yeah. fully fucking believe that Nux was trying to be helpful but at the same time hurtful <laughs> Bro, no, but no, no, no. He was he was legitimately trying to be like the most helpful dude in the world. And I and it love was like it. At the moment it was where so I noticed, nice. Like, I noticed me like two years ago trying to help Boogie out or like trying to understand him, and I'm like, hold on, I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let my friend make a mistake here. We <laughs> got, got, got the flashback. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna let him make a fuck up here first off, because like it was so a, honestly. Was, was so pressing next to get the flashbacks. Well, <laughs> it was so cute because he was like giving him ideas. Boogie's like, yeah, I'm gonna follow it, and I'm like, whoa, I know where this one leads and, to. <laughs> fucking okay, to be fair, one of the best snide comments. Hold on, I've seen this one before. <laughs> what do you mean you've seen it? It's brand new. <laughs> one of the best snide comments I heard during that was when he was telling him this, and he's like, I'm going to be real with you. I thought about saying a month, but I know you're not going to follow a fucking month, so I well, gave you today, a week. today Nux told us, like, so he didn't follow through, obviously. It was um, funny, Nux gave him the videos and all the ideas, and you know what his response was? He told him, it's like, oh, I already had these on my list, but I guess I'll get to them quicker. Bullshit! Bullshit, <laughs> you had the idea? Fuck you! <laughs> what do you Dude, mean? Nux is too innocent for this world, man. Dude, he- I mean, like, he's just sitting, like, at the end of it, I'm like, you, you know, you know it wasn't going to lead anywhere. I mean, you know it wasn't going to happen. I'm yeah, going to be. I, I liked it when Caleb was, like, sitting. Caleb, like, just asks him the questions. He's like, all right. Like, he, he even knows it. We both know it's bullshit. Like, we're both just like, oh, just hold back, cook, let him, let him talk, do what he needs to. I'm going to be real with you, dude. I love you, but I think Nux might be my favorite person on your podcast. He's, he's fucking he's like a he's such a polarizing dude like anytime like the vtube people always wonder it's like how do you know like the vtuber stuff it's like behind the scenes i'll tell you right now me caleb nuck we all have like our own businesses investments and stuff too it's like i think out of every guest we ever bring on i think we've maybe only talked to three that are actually like adults like actually fucking adults like functioning oh adults God. you're saying yeah okay like, don't get me wrong. We talk about stupid shit all the time. I, I like the podcast because I can talk about drama that I wouldn't want to talk about on my main channel because it's sure. a waste of time. Yep. And I don't think it's necessarily fitting with the content that I make. But, like, it's just my only – like, I would never talk about, like, Minecraft tickling nonsense. But on, the po- on a podcast, you can. <laughs> so, like, we usually have people on with us all the time. And, like, on the show, we're kind of, like, goofy. We have this – you know, we're just we're just normal, like, guys. Yeah. 100%. And then afterwards, like, when we're done filming, it's like, oh, we got to go for, like, fucking work. I got a meeting to get to and all this stupid shit. And I think out of everyone that we ever met, like, one thing I've learned is, like, 99% of YouTubers are fucking... You they know, have nothing job. else to they do. They have no idea what the fuck is going on. Dude, I, 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 was, uh, I, was at a, I was at a VidCon one year. And, like, I was just talking. Uh, I was, t- I was uh, discussing the tax situation of, like, YouTube earnings and stuff. I talked to a fucking YouTuber that was like, yeah, I haven't paid in like four years, but I'll get Whoa. to it eventually. I'm like, I'm like, motherfucker, you haven't paid the oh. IRS in four years? I'm like, is like, is bro is bro a decent sized YouTuber or is he smaller? 
I mean, we're, we're, we're talking like, I, I think at this point it's like close to a million. It's good viewership. Okay, it's, yeah, it's that's decent, yeah. more than enough for the IRS to notice you. I mean, it's, it's uh, not boy. even that. It's just like fucking, like, sometimes you'll find people that have no concept of, like, money, right? Like, oh, that's so scary. I, oh, I have that times, means. like, okay, when I travel, I have a rule where it's just like, I, I spend money, but I spend money on investments, like fucking yep. building, like, properties, like, purchasing stuff, like... Um, my money just gets shifted into like assets and investments and everything too. The yep. only time I ever spend like money, like without thinking about it is when I'm traveling, right? Like I have a rule mm -hmm. as soon as I, as soon as I go through the customs at an airport, vacation started, fucking spend money, right? Like have fun. I mean, yep. within reason, right? Like, yeah, yep. yeah, I think the worst I ever had was when I was in like Vegas and I probably was burning, I want to say like a, around a grand a day. Because, yeah. like, it's Vegas. So we were out for yeah. a weekend. So that involved, like, good food. Like, we were at, like, uh, fucking Morimoto's and everything. And, yep, yep. You know, just experiences mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, maybe throw some money at the table or something, like, just as a fun buck thing. And I felt guilty about it, too. So then when I went out to, like, VidCon, like, you got motherfuckers out there burning through, like, half their fucking month's income on the dumbest shit imaginable. You know? Like... I got dudes is, out there who are like buying like eighty, ninety dollar Ubers to get to fucking places. That's they're dumb. like breaking the bank trying to stay in like nice places and they're trying I, to they're trying to stay in the penthouse suite of the Caesars. Not even the penthouse suites. No, no, no. Okay, so in like Los Angeles, like I see people buying crack houses for a lot of money, and this yeah. is what I don't understand. It's like okay, so you'll find dudes who like rent out a crack house in Anaheim, Los Angeles. Anacron. That sounds like a bad idea already. We yeah, hundred percent. It, and it'll cost them like, I want to say, two grand for the weekend. I spent like four hundred dollars more, and I got to stay in a mansion in like fucking West Hollywood. I'm like, what? Right. Which way in West? Like nobody's even intelligent about that shit. No one's smart about any of that nonsense. Um, there's just a lot of people that have no understanding about like spending money and all that stupid bullshit. It's just they are some of the wildest people to find. Um. And I've also, like, learned one thing, too. It's, like, the social ineptitude of, like, most YouTubers in person is insane. Like, we all come from college, jobs, you know, careers. Yep. Um, I've had a career. Amaru's had a career. You've had a career, Kyle. We've had, we've had interactions in the real world. Yep. A lot of these guys, bro, they're sitting on Discord 24 hours a fucking day. And, like, okay, I say Los Angeles, like, when they come out for VidCon or any convention, it's, like, the one time when they're not with mommy and daddy. And they get to experience some, like, fucking individuality every once in a while. That's so fucking scary, that kind of sheltered life. So, I, I had a fucking had a point. wild thing. We rented a mansion, and I want to say this was, like, three years ago in, like, uh, West Hollywood. So, it was the first time I went to VidCon. First time in my entire life. Right? I didn't even go to VidCon. Like, I went in for, like, two hours. I just went there to get drunk on the weekend. So, yeah. it was in, like, Anaheim, but I was staying in, like, West Hollywood. So, we rented this, like, fucking mansion in, like, West Hollywood. Nice place. Uh, and then, like, we get all the booze. We're like, all right, sure. We'll give the address out. Come on over. So, anybody under the age of 21 never allowed because I'm like, bitch, I ain't getting this far from U.S. entry yep. for a fucking party. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, people came and stayed. Uh, not stayed, but they, like, went out here to party. You know what they fucking did? They started putting on music from Dream. Like, I'm uh, getting fucking drunk. I'm having shots. Me and Jorge are going shot for shot. If you don't know, blame it yeah, on Jorge. Yeah, yeah. That Boy. motherfucker can drink like a fish. So I want to I want to remind you, we were out drinking with the boys before we go back, and me and Jorge have already had like five fucking shots of tequila, right? Like we're already fucking pre-game yeah. drunk. So we go back home, <laughs> and we're still going shot for shot for shot. He ends up throwing <laughs> up. I don't fucking throw up. I'm like, I can handle it like a champ. And, like, I end up going to bed early because I'm like, dude, I'm fucking lit tonight. I'm going to bed. And, dude. like, everyone's gone. I go downstairs, and I'm, like, looking at the TV. I'm like, who the fuck is listening to Dream? Like, how fucking sad you guys got to be around. You're at a party. <laughs> you're at a fucking party, and you're listening to Dream? You're listening to, like, you're... the worst I've ever had is, like, at a party. These motherfuckers talk about, like, YouTube CPMs, like, oh. CTR. And, like, oh, my God. I'm just like, bro, can you sh like I had one moment. video performance and <laughs> well no I, I had a, I had a moment where like dudes were just talking to me and I'm like I'm like I'm drunk I'm like can you just like shut the fuck up for a minute like I don't want to <laughs> talk about work right now okay I don't want to talk about the numbers like shut the 
fuck up. I just want to exactly. enjoy life for a You're minute. You're there to decompress, dude. They're not, dude. They're like 100% turbo brain, like always connected. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm just here to have a fun time. But yeah, no, it's it's insane. So I guess it's worth talking about. But if you guys don't know, the Minecraft community is filled with like. <laughs> Disgusting fucking, people. Well, they're, well, they're filled with like, I, I think it's great what's happening to the Minecraft guys. Okay. Because I always fucking have never liked the Minecraft nutjob community, you know. So all these guys like mm -hmm. Dream, George Not Found. Apparently that dude's getting canceled for tickling a girl. Yeah. They were cuddling. He started tickling her. Apparently under the shirt or something. To be fair, to be fair, he has responded to this in in honestly the worst PR moves that I've mm -hmm. ever seen in history. He has handled this so poorly. Essentially just admitting to stuff without actually double checking to make sure that these things happened after the fact going to check out. And he's like, Oh, wait, hold on a minute. It turns out that this isn't right. You're this, this bitch over here is lying. Dude. My thing is like, bro, for women that have actually been through some real trauma, it's like, bro, right. compare what your trauma is to tickling. Oof, I'd be mm. fucking pissed. But no, the, 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 the thing, I guess, like, to, to kind of mention about that, too, is, like, with these kind of people, it's, I, I, like, this, they're the reason why I will never, ever have a party again. I will never invite somebody to my house. Like, if I, like, if I'm ever out in, like, the States, and I'm, like, you know, people want to come over to my place, I'm, like, sure, you can come over for, like, an hour. After that, you got to get the fuck home. You're not staying in my house. <laughs> I, like, I have a rule. If I'm falling asleep in my house everyone's getting the fuck out okay you're all getting the fuck home and yep. no i'm not paying for no uber you get you figure out how the fuck you, you figure out how to get here you figure out how to get the fuck back because yep. none of you you either stay homeless because i'm not having any of this crazy shit in my house yep. i'm not having a tickler mm -hmm. i'm not having a diddler i'm not doing anything <laughs> you know it's one of the things it's like even like like when women come up and like say like they want a photo with you it's like you do the hover hand shit you make sure yep. everything's fucking you know, yeah yeah, yeah. You, you make sure there ain't a single point of contact <laughs> bro, I, bro, I'm like fucking. I'm like a siege operator. I'm like fucking. I'm this is the site. She will not come and point. <laughs> you know, it's not, and it sounds fucking weird. Like we live in a different time, though. Honestly, it's like you have to. Back in the day, it's like I guess shit was a whole lot looser than it was now. But I'm just like, I'm like, dude, I, I don't want to have any pressure, or any problems with anything in my life. So I just stay away from all this bullshit, dude. I, I like. Yeah, my, I mean, mentality I go for. I mean, just that. take a look at. Uh, at the Caleb Hammer situation, his, oh, his situ so his situation is really like nobody's talking about it because everybody knows that the person accusing him is a absolute fucking nut job psychopath. But uh, one of the guests that uh, he had on his uh, on his uh, financial audit mm -hmm. essentially is accusing him of. I could be wrong on this part, but I believe he's accusing him of sexual assault because uh, Caleb he was, Hammer, the financial audit guy. Yeah, he's he. This guy is accusing Caleb. Apparently, he's account. he alleges that uh, Caleb Hammer like tried to sexually assault him, tried to uh, do all this stuff for him. Well, the real fucking story of it is uh, this guy. Caleb Hammer is very, he wants to help people. And this guy was trying to be like an influencer, but at the same time, he wanted to be a porn star. And apparently Caleb Hammer had some, uh, uh, contacts in the business. And he's like, yeah, let me get you some contacts over here. And now this guy, guy he's just bro. like, <laughs> I love his financial audits because like, I do too. He's, he's a good financial guy, but it's just like, literally it's like, I think the show is successful because he just invites the worst, the fucking train wrecks the of the world. This train wrecks. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to say that I'm a finance manager, but bitch, I know how a fucking credit card works. 99% of the people that go on the show don't even know how the fuck that shit works. Did you, it's did insane. you see the episode where the, uh, there was a woman on there. I don't remember who, who she was. It was about a month ago, and uh, she's like, yeah, I have a portfolio, and she starts naming off all the things, and she's, and uh, she was like, uh, yeah, I have a few stocks of Bitcoin, <laughs> and I was like, woman, <laughs> if you're calling Bitcoin a stock, you probably shouldn't have a portfolio. That's why we should just keep people away from 